Hello everyone, the old Star Wars nerd here. I hope you're doing well, and I want to thank you for joining me today as we go over some Star Wars headlines. All right, this headline keeps popping up all over the place, and it just will not go away. It all concerns the latest comic book issue of Darth Vader, number 11, and how there is a hand floating in a jar in it. So I just wanted to go over a few headlines real quick, and maybe have a look at the comic, see what it actually says, and then um, talk about some plot holes that all this opens up and how silly it all is. But anyway, let's just get to it. So coming up in this first webpage, Gaming Ideology, it goes into how this proves that Rey is now a Skywalker because that is Luke's hand that the Emperor used to make Rey and Snoke along with his DNA. And that's where all the experiments came from. And so this just proves it. So these people are going on the assumption that hand is Luke's. The Emperor is doing experiments on it. And that's where Ray and Snoke came. Plausible enough. Then you got this uh, story here. It kind of goes over the same thing, but it also brings in the fact that it could also be setting up for what happened in Heir to the Empire with George Sabath. But Ahsoka is going to be out going after Grand Admiral Thrawn. And we know that Thrawn was heavily involved in that whole arc as well. Or it could also be that they use that, that hand is Luke's and they use some of the Skywalker DNA and give Rey a biological connection. And it also explained the power in the Force and her connections to Han Solo, Ben Solo, Luke, and Leia. And, um, oh, here's what I was looking for. That been make tinkering with early versions of Snoke, even potentially injecting enough Skywalker DNA into them to explain how easily Ben Solo's Kylo Ren connected to him. But then this story talks about how Luke's, that's Luke Skywalker's hand, but they're definitely going to be using it to bring out more of the heir to the empire type stuff which is i'm all for i love the heir to the empire and i would love them to do that whole character arc so that's what i'm hoping for this is luke's hand that they're going to go along and do some sort of arc with uh maybe maybe not george sabath and luke skywalker maybe somehow or other bring in mara jade but i'd like them to go along that route and i think they could do that using the Ahsoka series, and the World Between Worlds, and the Veil of the Force. So we could already be in the change timeline, and that this is where it's going to change and go forward and be different. Hopefully. I got my fingers crossed. So, yeah, but the whole thing really plans on, or uh, hinges on, what actually was said in the comic, and why everybody thinks this, and how it could go either way. So let's just have a look in the comic real quick. Let's just skim over this comic real quickly and go through it. So I've got it pulled up here. Right here. Darth Vader number 11. So Darth Vader, uh, apparently the Emperor is testing Vader right now. He's been tested on this other planet where they sent assassins after Vader and a bunch of other tests. And of course Vader has made it through. So we see Vader at the beginning of this. He's already a little banged up. And so this guy is running up to the Emperor on Exegol, and he's saying that uh, Vader's has survived and he's on his way. And, you know, of course, the Emperor is saying, of course, I know that. <laughs> so anyway, Vader comes up and he says, show yourself, Master. The Emperor says, I left you broken on Mustafar. What did that teach you, Lord Vader? And he says, I want to see your face when I teach you what it is to fear. And so Vader comes riding in on this big squid type thing. And so he's going to come in with this big squid type thing and take care of the emperor. But the emperor sends out these little shrimp looking rancor type. I don't know what against this monster. So, of course, the squid grabs the rancor monsters and squishes them in half. Vader comes down. He says, I am no longer your apprentice. The emperor goes puffed and goes, does it like that and just commands the squid to kill itself. You can see Vader up there. A little bit, and that's uh, a close-up on him. He says, no, you must fight, trying to tell the beast he needs to fight and not let the Emperor do it. The Emperor makes the beast kill itself. The Vader is now down there on level with the Emperor, and the Emperor says, you were saying. And so then the Emperor turns and goes into this temple, and then Vader has to follow him. So Vader follows him in through this temple, where he also starts feeling this presence, intense pain and suffering. So he comes in here. And says, there, you sense it, don't you? You talk about fear, but even now you forget where it all begins. With pain. 
And so you see him walking through this chamber here. And yeah, in these chambers, you can see other, we don't know it's clones, but you know, we got to assume it's, so yeah, you assume it's clones. This one's alive, screaming. These other ones are, who knows what they are. And they kind of look snokish, but you know, anything could look snokish. No hair floating in a vat, you know, it's all wrinkled and ugly. And, but then this is the only mention or the only scene with the hand. And it talk, he's talking to Vader. He's walking, or he's in, um, this is the scalpel of creation. Don't know what that's referring to. Could be this whole chamber. Could be anything. I used it to make all of these things. I can use it to make anything. And that's where he looks at this hand in the jar. Could be Luke's. Might not be Luke's. Probably is Luke's. I'll give you that. But you never know. So then nothing, nothing is said about it. No, nothing is mentioned about it. Nothing. That you just see a picture of it. That's it. And then it goes on to where these, some of the clone things come out and start attacking Vader. He kills them off, but you know he's getting hurt in the process. He's getting wounded more and more. And he's very tired here. And of course, the Emperor has more stuff. He says, and so many others wish to meet you. And all these things come charging at Vader. So Vader stands up again, deactivates his lightsaber, raises out this... Uh, he's got this replacement arm. He took off a droid in the previous uh, issue. Uses the force, takes the knives from all the figures, turns it against them, and kills them all with their own knives. So Vader just took them all out. <laughs> and then he keeps going down. He's still following the Emperor, going after the Emperor, and he feels more pain, more suffering, unfathomable pain, whatever it could be. And he keeps going down and down, and he comes to this... Uh, place where it opens up on Exegol and you see all these Star Destroyers sitting around. And these are the Star Destroyers probably from the last, uh, from the Rise of Skywalker, whatever movie that was. And each of them have a cannon that can destroy a planet. So yeah, it's probably them. And there are hundreds of them. So they're down here, what, 20, 30 years before the Rise of Skywalker? How the hell did that happen? Um... So then Vader keeps going on and he gets to this chamber and he gets to this chamber, he opens it up and it's a chamber of immense kyber crystals that have been bled and are suffering for the Sith. And that's where they're getting the power for all the weapons. So Vader comes in there. He feels all the power and anger from there. And the Emperor is telling him that he's, you know, he can share in it. And then it kind of cuts to this uh, a scene reminiscent of Empire Strikes Back, but the roles reverse. Vader here is on the ledge, and you can see his hand is cut off. And Luke is there offering him a chance to come back and destroy the Emperor. So, but then it changes. And the Emperor asks Vader, have you chosen? And he says, yes, my master. And of course he joins the Emperor. So he can have all that power. But anyway, that is it. That is it. That is all it says about the hand. It could be anything. I'm going to, you know give you that more than likely yeah it is luke's hand and they could use it either way but it, it doesn't prove anything it's just there there's nothing said about the emperor doing any kind of experiments on it and as far as i know in any other books and comics or anything else nothing else says anything about it so as far as i'm concerned i'm still hoping that they're not going to do it and they're going to go off under the air to the empire type stuff I'm hoping that they're going to do the Ahsoka thing with the uh, world between worlds and the veil of the force and go at it like that. So that is my hope. So I have my fingers crossed pulling for that one. But either way, it's still, still with all this stuff in here and how that might be cool. It still opens up way too many plot holes. It's still silly and opens up way too many plot holes because you've got to go back to these stories I was looking at. And if nothing else... I mean, there's all sorts of things you could pull out of it. But this one right here hints at how Vader could have stopped Palpatine's return. You know, so he saw all this stuff, and he knew after he stopped Palpatine, he was, you know, he's dying there. And at any time, he could have come back and told Luke about it. You know? Because while it's clear that Vader's judgment and emotions are clouded here, it's not clear why he didn't share this information with Luke after he kills Palpatine later on. Since Anakin wasn't a Sith anymore, he could have told Luke about Exegol's secrets and how the Palpatine threat hadn't been totally eradicated. Instead, Vader just says goodbye after earning the forgiveness of his son in a sentimental moment. 
While Vader's warning would have prevented Rey's birth as she was Palpatine's granddaughter, it would have also stopped the First Order, the corruption of Ben Solo, and helped Luke usher in a new era of peace and a very different future for the Star Wars universe. So there. It opens up way too many plot holes, so I don't see why they would have done such something as silly as show that, other than go, ooh, look, it's Luke's hand, and they weren't really thinking, which, gee, they've never done anything like that before. But anyway... I just thought that was kind of silly and wanted to give my two cents on that. And we don't need to see that anymore. So there, let's get rid of all that. So yeah, there you go. That's what I think. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I've seen. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thanks again for joining me. I am Ted, the old Star Wars nerd. Please leave a comment below. Click the like button. Click the subscribe button. Click that bell for notifications, okay? Uh, thanks for tuning in again, and we will talk to you later. Take care.